Ladies and gentlemen, we are at the crossroads in this country, and unless we step up and live according to what the prophet Jeremiah revealed, we are going to be in the state of destruction. As a matter of fact, unless we do what the scriptures tell us to do, as priests and kings, unless we take our authority, America is done. It's over with. And so I began my prayer, my fasting, and my walking. 30 days later, I was going to be in Los Angeles addressing a group of, uh, of Chinese believers, people that came from mainland China, from Taiwan, from Hong Kong, others who had been here in America. But this is very important to me because Isaiah tells us that the Chinese are going to be uh, very much instrumental, very instrumental in bringing Israel back from the four winds of heaven uh, to their land in the last days, a prophecy that has not yet been fulfilled. And I know that I've been put in this loop and we are now producing our programs and the very first one is a series on Revelation for the Chinese people. And you will also be able to see uh, me speaking fluent Mandarin Chinese uh, in the, as I teach the book of Revelation. But I'm going out there because I know this is important and so I'm not only praying and fasting for America, I'm praying and fasting for this divine appointment that uh, is set up. I had been asked by uh, Paul Shea, who I know to, to be an apostle. Uh, and I know he's an apostle because he'd never call himself one, but he is a sent one. He is sent by the Almighty. He is, uh, has been sent to open the doors in China, in Taiwan, to get uh, this message out through the biggest uh, Christian network in the world, which is Good TV, uh, and also to minister to the Chinese people. And so when he asked me to come out and to teach on the, the chronology of the Gospels, uh, and changing it from the book of Revelation, I knew that I needed to hear his voice because he is the one that is sent, and I am sent to help him to get the gospel of the kingdom out to the Chinese people. So it is during this, this time that I'm walking and praying that I recalled that Many years ago, I swore to protect and defend the, United St uh, the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And though the domestic enemies far outnumber the foreign enemies at this point in time. The domestic enemies, who are the atheist, who do not believe in God or God-given rights, and want a totalitarian government to, that, that is unimpeachable and cannot, it, it does not answer to anyone except for they themselves. This was what was taking and putting the stranglehold on all of America. And so I began to, to pray and to fast and to then, I went to Shaul, to Paul's letter to Timothy, because this is what came up. In 1 Timothy 1.18, we read, this charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. This charge, this is, this, these are the orders that I'm, I'm giving to you. I'm committing this to you, Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. The prophecies that went before on him, his ordination specified this. And he call, recalls this, that you might, by these prophecies that were put on you at the time of your ordination, that you might war a good warfare. He was called as a warrior, not a flesh and blood warrior, but a spiritual warrior. And the spiritual warrior, there are responsibilities that reach into the physical world because of this. He was called to be a warrior. I recall a few years ago that we did the Open Door series with Nehemiah Gordon. And at Hanukkah, 
we called together the Hanukites, the warriors who have dedicated themselves, and at that very thing, we published the good tidings, the good news of standing against the ban. It was one of Nehemiah's uh, great, great, great grandfathers that it not only enforced the ban, reinforced the ban against the pronunciation of the name of Yehovah and keeping it from the world. And the document that he wrote that was then later published, this was what, what, what was found, that the name was not only known, but it was quieted, it was held in strict confidence by the rabbis. It was banned by the rabbis. But Nehemiah Gordon, who had a desire, an earnest desire to know the name, grew up speaking Hebrew, went to Hebrew University, became an, an editor on the Dead Sea Scrolls publication project, as well as one of the editors on the Aleppo Codex, a one who can read uh, uh, ancient Hebrew handwriting with, with absolute fluidity. He was the one that laid it out that we are going to stand against this ban that one of his forefathers put in place that the Almighty said that I brought you out of Egypt with a mighty hand so that the whole world will know that my name is Yehovah. And his name appears nearly 7,000 times in the Hebrew text of the Bible, but not but once in the English versions of the Bible. We took a stand and we said, we are gonna fight as warriors, as Hanukkah warriors, and stand against that ban. Now, this last year, as of this last year, now more than 1,000 ancient Hebrew manuscripts with all the vowel pointings, yod heh vav heh, with the vowel pointings that let us know beyond a shadow of a doubt that his name is Yehovah, that the Israelites and the Jews understood his name is to be Yehovah, and where I got involved, ladies and gentlemen, is that I had to know from heaven, is this the right answer? Like this video? Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Watch the full episode of Shabbat Night Live this Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. See you then.